everyone. Sorry that we are having to record at the same time as run everything, but uh, we've been having some issues with uh, streaming, so we're going to record today's The Vineyard broadcast, and we will begin very shortly. As a matter of fact, uh, ways to bless us is paypal.me forward slash JVM Vineyard. You can also use um, check or money order to James Barkus Ministries, Box 762, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. You can also uh, send your prayer request testimonies to jbmprayeratlive.com or jbmworldhq at live.com for events and revivals. We're on Twitter, jbmworldhq and jbmprayer. Uh, another thing... We started doing WhatsApp, so we're going to have more information on that as soon as I learn uh, how to get things done with it. We've got WhatsApp on the phone and on the desktop computer as well. Our normal service times are Sunday morning, 11 a.m., Sunday, Sunday evening at 8 p.m., Wednesday evening at 8 p.m. as well. We're likely going to have to record our evening service as well due to some technical issues. Good, good day. I'm James Barkas. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, what we're doing right now is trying to get everything situated here with uh, the service this morning or this uh, this morning it's afternoon now but we've had a lot of technical difficulties this morning and that is due to the lack of a ground rod at the electrical meter where the cable service could be grounded to as well we don't know what happened before we moved in two years ago, but for the last few years, we've had good service. Everything was showing good, but now all of these problems started literally in April 2022, and even before that, because we've had a lot of issues with uh, infrastructure on the internet, power, and other things over the last several months since December at the very earliest that I remember with this. We were broadcasting and streaming and what have you and doing what we do best and now we've had a hard, hard time. Spectrum has been out I know at least eight or nine times. I filed a complaint with the FCC because we needed to make sure this was set where I didn't lose another job. I pray I still don't lose this job with this in play here. So, there is a book that we uh, just obtained. It's 30 Life Principles, a Guide for Growing in Knowledge and Understanding of God. And part of growing in God is that intimate relationship we have with our Heavenly Father and His Son Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost. And when we have that intimate relationship, friends, we begin to understand more. We mature. We do a lot more than just pray and seek and read. We mature. And y'all forgive me as I put on my copper fit gloves as the tendonitis has been bothering me the last several months. A 
lot of things have been keying up on me and causing problems from time to time. But here I am. So we're going to begin in his word God has given hundreds of life principles to help us become everything that he designed us to be. And there, these are the tenets of faith tried and proven throughout history. Truths from the Bible that have never failed and will never disappoint. Our first one is intimacy with God as his highest priority for our lives determines the impact of our lives. So we're going to get to know our Lord and Savior. At the beginning of this journey, we need to set out in the right direction to reach our destination. And... You know, we understand we're special and beloved and that God has a specific and wonderful plan for us that gives us all the love and fulfillment and significance and power that we're looking for. Example, Romans 12.2 And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So, what motivated Jehovah to design the universe? And why did he create us? Even, even before the beginning of the world, Jehovah loved us and wants us to have a close personal relationship with him and he with us. But the reason that he created us was because he loved us. In the first book of Genesis... Well, first of all, let's get with Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That is why he created us. That is why he wanted us to be in his image. Had Adam not fallen for the temptation by Eve to eat that fruit, The fruit that she said she was beguiled to eat by the devil. Had that not happened, we would be in a perfect relationship with Jehovah our Father. So, what did God create before he formed the first man? Well, here we are at Genesis. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And Jehovah said, Let there be light. And there was light. 
God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day. Let's keep going here. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Notice how we begin with the evening. The evening begins the day, biblically, and the morning ends it. So, God created heavens and the earth. Then he said, let there be light and divided the light from the darkness day and night. Here's what else he created. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. God made the firmament, divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. The evening and the morning were the second day. God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place. Let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And gathering together waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And God and the earth brought forth the grass, and the herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. <coughs> God said, Let the water spring forth abundantly, the moving creature that hath life and fell that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl over his kind, after his kind. And God saw it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let the fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and morning were the fifth day. And I got rain about this start at my location. I was going to have to walk to the store later. Long story short, <laughs> looks like my trip to the store is going to be delayed um, until later. That's as we're taping this at 1.54 p.m. in the afternoon, Sunday, August 21st, 2022.
And God said, Let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle, creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Oh, here's day six. And here is where I said it before. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female, he cr created he them. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. <coughs> and God said, Behold, I have given you every herb-bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in which the fruit of the tree yielding seed to you it shall be for meat, and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to every living thing that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good, and the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and the host of them, all the host of them, and on the seventh day, hang on, thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. I know we went a little bit further than what we intended to in our scripture. But to answer the question, what did God create before he formed the first man? The heavens and the earth, the light, the darkness, the stars in the sky, every creature, every fowl of the air, every creature in the sea, every creature that walked dry land, and all that was done before he created man. People had to have, and this is question two, why do you think God created all of these things before he made people? Here's the answer. He created all these things before people because he needed someone at the end to be the shepherd to help these creatures grow, mature, sustain them, they be sustained. All that had to take place. And why do you think it was important for Jehovah to ensure that everything was good before he created mankind. Because if it wasn't good, it wasn't going to help mankind. Everything Jehovah did had a reason for it. Had a reason to benefit man in the relationship with Jehovah. Because Jehovah providing for our spiritual needs. Give me just a moment. Get this bug off, or get this banner off the bottom of the screen here. 
But Jehovah, making everything before he made man, man needed to be sustained. But before he could do that, you had to create the sustenance. And that's what Jehovah did. Jehovah created the sustenance, let it be fruitful and multiply, and take dominion. Thus was that edict given. And I praise God for that. So, before he created mankind, why did it? Well, here's your answer. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. On his own, or of his own, will beget he us with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. So, Genesis 1.26, why did Jehovah say, let us make man in our own image? After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Well, guess what? Someone had to help take care of the animals. Much like a shepherd travels with the flock when they water, when they eat, when they travel, the shepherd is always there. Amen. That is why Jesus came to be called the Good Shepherd. Because the flock needed him. And not only did the flock need them, but we needed them. We as the children of God. You know, in all actuality, we are all related to our Creator, Jehovah, and His Son, Jesus Christ. And to the Holy Ghost. We're all related. And by creating us in his image, we are created in the image of Jehovah. Because Jehovah wanted to have a relationship with us. Adam messed it up, Jesus Christ fixed it. We were meant to be shepherds. And this is going to answer question number five. What jobs did God give mankind to do? And how do our responsibilities relate to the fact that we bear his image? Guess what? We're in his image because we were supposed to be shepherds and keepers of the flock. Jehovah wanted a relationship with us too. He wanted a deep, intimate relationship with us. So, That answered the first question, the first set of questions. So,
all of our abilities, all of our tasks, all that we have and all that we are, don't matter a hill of beans at any time, if we don't have that relationship with Jehovah and His Son, Jesus Christ. Why do I say Jehovah? Why do I call God's name Jehovah? Well, Exodus 6, 3. Let's start at verse 1 and then chapter 6 of Exodus. And I appear unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name Jehovah did I not appear to them. That is what Jehovah told Moses. Moses really is the first Jehovah's Witness. You want to get right down to it. And because Moses shepherded the people of Israel in a way acted as a judge, he heard the voice of the Lord. I'm sorry, my jaw popped at the same time I yawned. I do apologize for that. And if you heard that, you're probably thinking, wow. But, you know, air pressure changes, it happens. TMJ right there on this side of the jaw here does it each and every time without fail. So the question is, ladies and gentlemen, why? Do we as human beings count our tasks and our duties and whatever toward God? Why do we count them? And the answer is we do it because now we fear man, not God. We fear man more than we fear Jehovah. get to part two tonight. But I touched on this topic a while back. And I have got to stand up for a bit. I touched on this topic before. I'll touch on it right now again. But I'm going to stand up for just a little bit because there's something that I need to do. And that is to try to keep myself energized and awake. And I gotta repent. This morning we tried live streaming twice. This machine and using Wi-Fi in the living room. And unfortunately we were unable to do it. Today we had a lot of technical problems through the week. And I pray all of these troubles that we have been having, technically, will be cured. Otherwise, it gets to a point where I have to look at my job in consideration. 
I have to look at other things in consideration. And I have to do what I have to do. As Jehovah moves me to do it. There are times that I I have felt that I've poured and poured and poured and need refreshing myself. And I pray that refreshing comes. It can only come through the obedience to the word of Jehovah. The book from Genesis to Revelation. Yes, I put it up on screen so that I can read it to you. And I keep doing it. But this is a study that we will get more and more in depth as time goes on. And you and I both know that. My apologies for raising the camera a little bit, but I am trying to work it the best way I know how. I do what I can when I can and how I can. I pray that the good Lord gives me that strength to keep going. But it does take more people than just one because the Lord said where two or more gather in my name I will be there too and my wife and I are here all the time in the ministry but we are praying for people who believe people who want to help just come just come down and if you're able to run a camera great if you do woodworking, I need a pull, I need a podium that I can set up in the living room or set up in the dining room and be able to have a proper service by standing up and walking around. I'm looking for people to run OBS Studio so that if I'm running my mouth trying to preach the Word of God, I'm not trying to focus on CG, presentation, the Word of God, all this. Because you see how I've been turning from one place to another to another. I need to be able to focus to read the Word. So I'm pleading right now in the name of Jesus. If you are thinking about helping us, send your resume. Send your resume. JVMWorldHQ at live.com. But I pray each day in every way that those of you who have been with us over the last few years, maybe you know of people that want to help. Get them to come. We're located at 302 West 3rd Street, Manchester, Georgia, 31816. I know we don't have much room in this house to, to host services and, and, and revivals and what have you, but you're more than welcome to help as much as possible. And I pray each day, we've got two years worth of services here that, that, that are up. Yes, I've had health issues. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to mince words. 
There's been twice I've had major infections and I've almost died. But I've been brought around. I have been brought around because Jehovah has not seen fit for me to leave this world right now. Because he has a mission for me. It's because of that relationship that I have with Jehovah and his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Ghost that he wants me to continue this mission. And, and so continuing that mission, I have to do what I have to do. I have to plead for help. And that's what I'm doing right now. I'm pleading for help. So if you have experience in media and can run a camera or run OBS Studio, I can even train you to do it. I will teach you how to do it. If you'd like to help to get this ministry off the ground and completely off the ground and us growing in the right direction, I'd like your help. I'm not going to ask for money. Money will come. Tithes and offerings will come when people are obedient to Jehovah and His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Those will come with obedience. And it starts at the top. Well, I've given everything I've got to the ministry and to this mission. I've paid the bills. I've bought equipment. I've listen to the Lord. I've given everything that I've got, including the computer and the two monitors, the microphone, the camera, the light, everything. Everything that I've owned, I've given to the Lord. He's got it. I'm just leasing it from Him. With the work that I do preaching this Word, I'm leasing But I need help. Because in doing everything that I'm doing over here, it takes about five or six people to really effectively do this, collaboratively. I'm open to receiving any help that I can get. In Jesus' name. The first thing you have to do before you sign up is you pray. You pray on it. You ask Jesus. You ask Jehovah in Jesus' name, is this where you want me to be? See what you can do. We'll do part two of the uh, life principles to go by. Do that tonight. We'll finish up this one. I pray each day and I pray in every way that you are receiving the blessing in Jesus' name. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Everything I do, I do it for Him. And it's up to you. If you would like to join, great. I want to say thank you so much. And we will make up for this tonight by preaching a more acceptable service. Tonight, 8 o'clock, we're going to record it and upload it. So this is James Barkus. Well, thank you for watching The Vineyard. We hope you have a great day. See you tonight.